best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, Rob Liefeld's pissing people off again. How about that? Anyway, Rob Liefeld uh, tweeted something that's got people uh, irritated. So he wrote this, and I'm going to read it to you now. It says, I'll be putting Blue Beetle up on the same shelf as Doctor Strange 2, Thor 4, Ant-Man 3, Black Adam, Shazam 2, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, and so many others that I've not seen or participated with. The golden age of superhero films is behind us for now. And uh, that's, that's, that's pissed people off. Um, why has it pissed people off? Well, I, who the fuck knows? I, I mean, look, this is, uh, this is going to be the weirdest, most negative thing I'm going to say about Rob, and then I'm going to move on to a bunch of positive things. So the negative thing I have to say is that it doesn't matter you know, in the words of The Rock, it doesn't matter what Rob Liefeld thinks about these kinds of things because it's your wallet, it's your ticket, and if you want to go see it, go see it. And if the masses disagree with Rob Liefeld, and they certainly have at various times, it, it you know, it, it's one guy's opinion. Why the fuck do you care? And yet Twitter is pissed off because apparently saying what Rob said is an indictment of current comics. And I, I don't even know anymore. Look, I mean, here's the funny thing. Uh, Gen X is by far the best generation. Fuck all the other generations. And, you know, that is just the flat truth. And I'm sorry if you don't uh, believe that. But Gen X knows where it's at. If you went back to the early 90s, and you went to a comic store and you said, hey, they're making a Blue Beetle, uh, Black Adam, Shazam, and She-Hulk movie. Doctor Strange. Hell, even Thor and Ant-Man. Nobody would have given a shit about the vast majority of those things. They don't matter. So for Rob Liefeld to say, hey, uh, I don't care about a bunch of characters that, you know, 30 years ago were considered B-list characters and Let's be honest, in 2023, half those characters are still considered B-list characters. Nobody would have cared. Everybody would have been like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. I may still enjoy those movies, and as a big-time comic nerd, I'll probably still go see them. But I understand there's a difference between Blue Beetle and, say, Batman in terms of popularity. There's a reason why they made multiple Batman films and why we're getting our first Blue Beetle movie, maybe, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're not the same. And that's not a big shame. That's not a big, uh, you know, shocking revelation in comics. It's just reality. Now, the actor that cast for Blue Beetle was pretty incredible in uh, Cobra Kai. I think he did a great job, and I'm sure he'll do a great job in Blue Beetle. And, and I'm sure that movie will be great. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it'll be great. Shazam 2 sucked ass. I, I didn't enjoy it. Black Adam was not much better either. And and take it from me, a guy who says, you know, who, who does appreciate Dwayne Johnson and everything he can bring to the table, who uh, appreciated The Rock when he gave Farouk a big po portrait of himself as a, like, ultimate trolling move. That was pretty great. I, I you know, you want to put my bona fides down as somebody who understands what, uh, you know, Dwayne can do? Absolutely. Why uh, the the uh, my via chief can do? I, I'm I'm with you, but let's be serious. Uh, Blue Beetle is not a major major movie. Now, what Rob is revealing here is is basically this. You know, we're moving our way down the chain of superhero movies, and the reality is we haven't nailed it with the big names yet. Why is it that we can't have an epic run of Superman movies, of Wolverine movies? Why is it that Hollywood's like, well, we, we're going to have to tell the, you know, I liked Old Man Logan. Mark Miller did a great job with Old Man Logan. It was fun. But the, but the reality is, like, there are a dozen, like, not, not just done, there's a like hundred Wolverine stories that basically, you know, defined him as an awesome character. And the only reason why Old Man Logan worked is because you had that history of Wolverine being a badass. The entire time you're reading Old Man Logan, you're waiting for that moment for Wolverine to snap and just start killing the shit out of people like 
He does because he's the best at what he does and what he does is is very nice. That was the gimmick. Mark knows that. Why is it that we're all pretending that, you know, the kind of the sorrowful kind of introspective version of Wolverine is the ideal version of that character? It's not. So when you go down that list, it's like She-Hulk was a vague uh, carbon copy of the John Byrne era. Miss Marvel was a, by and large, extremely uneven version of a superhero that G. Willow Wilson did an okay job with. But my kids, who arguably should be the prime demographic for loving Miss Marvel, you know, loved the first episode and then bored out hard. Like, they, like I, I couldn't have paid my kids to sit there and watch that fifth episode where they, would, they did the, uh, the back-in-time you know, in India, like, like my kids were like, fuck, I would rather do homework. I think I did a video of that they, they said that like my, my, my older daughter was like, um, in a choice between watching Miss Marvel or doing homework, she pissed, she picked homework. My younger daughter watched she Hulk, And the only thing she remembers for that show, the only thing was she Hulk twerking because it was funny to watch this green monster character shaking her ass. That's not, building a brand you know i i my my um both my daughters loved ant-man the first one my older daughter couldn't stand ant-man too my younger daughter liked it okay mainly she liked it because of the wasp she liked the fact that there was a girl who could have powers that was kind of fun and you know keep in mind she was seven at the time watching that movie or six i mean six or seven I, I tried my best to get them to go see Quantum Mania. I watched that movie by myself. My kids didn't want to watch it. My my older daughter was like, I, they, they she picked Brahms. She's like, I would like to go get ice cream at Brahms, and if I, you know, I'll I I'd rather do that than watch the movie. She picked ice cream over watching Ant Man. My younger daughter, I just went up to her room and kind of played with toys. That that was. That was what they picked. I wouldn't watch the movie alone and thought, yeah, you know, I'm trying to open up a comic store and get things back up and going. Shit. We got to, we got to make some changes because right now this younger generation is it, it, we're losing them hard. So Rob makes these comments about, you know, the golden age of superhero movies is over. It's not, it doesn't have to be. It'd be incredibly easy, super easy, barely an inconvenience to get it working again. But you're going to have to tell core stories and you're going to have to to kind of excite these people. And by the way, most of the people listening to this video right now, you're not the audience. It'd be great if we could get you excited and get you happy about these films, but you're not it either. The The core demographic that we need to kind of you know attract and excite is 8 to 18 for a lot of these films. We need to get them so enamored so they go to bed, they dream about these superheroes, they dream about the adventures they can have. That's going to be what's going to carry the comic division forward for the next 60 years. That That's it. Right now, those, those kids could care less. It's of very little interest. So Rob, who's at the other end of the spectrum, older guy, uh, he's telling you the truth. He's basically telling you that that you know, I, I, these things aren't holding any interest. I, this isn't how, this isn't the way forward. And he's right. Um, there, the, the difference in, in a lot of this stuff is, um, we, we say that, uh, it's gone forever. It's definitely not, you know, there, there definitely is a world where, this can all be recovered where you can make things happen, where you can get people excited about it again, but it's, it's not going to work this way. Um, I'm, I'm sure, you know, blue beetle as a film is going to have a good writer, a good director. They've cast a good actor who's going to be in it. I'm sure it'll be great. I'm also sure it will be completely irrelevant when all is said and done. That's a shame. With the talent they're assembling, it, it shouldn't be that way. The golden age of movies doesn't have to be behind us, but it probably is. And that, that just sucks. 
Yeah, that's a super negative a video. I should, I need to come up with something better. Um, well, you know, I, 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 yeah, I, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm desperately trying to think of something positive here. Um, hey, you know, uh, there's, there's this candy haichu. It's pretty great. It's, it's like super, super tasteful. You should, you should try some of that. Thanks for listening.